It doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't get any more fabulous. And as bad as it is, it does not get any better. <laughs> Stuck in a traffic jam and the scenery is beautiful, irritating gusts of boredom, and on the radio is playing. If you don't like my oceans, don't swim in my seas. You can't hurt me, cause storms can't hurt the sky. Sugar skulls and long necklaces of rotting human skulls of police officers, lawyers, and judges, the triumph over abuse and injustice, fat chance, ring the alarm. I could not save you. You are addicted to anger and complaining. When you got hepatitis, everything looks yellow. My anger ate the goose that lays the golden egg, eggs, thick bacon, and a little something sweet. And the most surprising change is being the god of your enemies. The eagles fly below us. The illusions that make life bearable, the illusions that make life bearable, the illusions that make life bearable. When you lose the illusions that make life bearable, when you lose the illusions that make life bearable, when you've lost whatever it is you believed or invented, were imprinted or scarred by, unthinkable loss, delusion inside delusion, everything is delusion, including wisdom. And then there's the illusions that make life bearable, the illusions that make life bearable, the illusions that make life bearable. I'm here to do whatever is your pleasure. Empty words, gone without a trace. All I had to do was get through it. All I had to do was get through it. All I had to do was get through it. You can't win. You can't break even. And you can't even quit the game. And happily, very soon, I will remember nothing. The sand is snow a hurricane in a drop of cum. You will find your true love in the end. You will find your true love in the end. When you die, you will find your true love in your mind. When you die, you will find your true mind. In the darkest night is the brightest light. Clear, unlocatable, emptiness, awareness. Thank you. And next, I'm going to read uh, some excerpts from a very long memoir piece that's called The Death of William Burroughs. William died on August 2nd, 19, August 2nd, 1997, Saturday at 6.30 in the afternoon from complications from a massive heart attack he had the day before. I was with William Burroughs when he died, and it was one of the best times I ever had with him. Doing Tibetan Nyingma Buddhist meditation practices, I absorbed his consciousness into my heart. I was the vehicle, his consciousness passing through me. A gentle 
shooting star came in my heart and up the central channel and out the top of my head to a pure field of great clarity and bliss. It was very powerful. William Burroughs resting in great equanimity and the vast empty expanse of primordial wisdom mind. I was staying in William's house, doing my meditation practices for him, trying to maintain the good conditions and dissolve any obstacles that might be arising for him at that very moment in the bardo. I had confidence the William had a high degree of realization, but he was not totally not completely an enlightened being. Lazy, alcoholic, junky William. I did not allow doubt to arise in my mind even for an instant because it would have allowed doubt to arise in William's mind. Now I had to do it for him. And then another part of this piece is called what went into William Burroughs' coffin with his dead body? On Tuesday morning, August 6, 1997, James Grauholz and Ira Silverberg came to William's house to pick out the clothes for the funeral director to put on William's dead body. The clothes were in a closet in my room, and we picked out the things that would go into William's coffin and grave, accompanying him on his journey in the underworld. His favorite gun, a 38 snub nose special, fully loaded with five shots. The gun was my idea. William always said, you can never be too well armed in any situation. Of his more than 80 world-class guns, he often wore it on his belt during the day and slept with it, fully loaded, on his right side under the bedsheet every night for 15 years. Gray fedora. He always wore a hat when he went out, and we wanted his consciousness to feel at ease dead. His favorite cane, a sword cane made of hickory with a light rosewood finish. Black sport jacket, dark with a dark green, uh, with a dark green tint. We rummaged through his closet and it was the best of his shabby clothes and smelling sweet of him. Blue jeans, the least worn ones were the only ones clean jockey underwear and socks. Red bandana, he often kept one in a back pocket. Black shoes, the ones he wore when he performed. I thought the old brown ones that he wore every day because they were more comfortable. But James Grauholz insisted. There's an old CIA slang that says getting a new assignment is getting new shoes. White shirt, we'd bought it in Beverly Hills on the Red Night Tour in 1981. It was his best shirt. All the others had become a bit ragged, and even though he had lost, he, it had gotten tight, he'd lost a lot of weight, and we thought it would fit. Necktie, blue, hand-painted by William. Moroccan vest, green velvet with a gold brocade trim given him by Brian Geisen 25 years before. In his lapel buttonhole was the rosette of the French government's officier de arts and letters and the rosette of the American Academy of Arts and Letters honors which William very much appreciated. A gold coin in his pants pocket, 
a gold 19th century Indian head $5 piece symbolizing all wealth. He would have enough money to buy his way in the underworld. His eyeglasses in his outside jacket pocket. A ballpoint pen. He was a writer and sometimes wrote longhand. A joint of really good grass. Junk. Just before the funeral, Grant Hart slipped a small white paper packet into William's pocket. Nobody's going to bust him, said Grant. William, bejeweled with all his adornments, was traveling in the underworld. I kissed him. An LP album of Us Together, 1974, was called Biting Off the Tongue of a Corpse. I kissed him on the lips, but I didn't do it. And I